Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the Anbenix RG Cube, a handheld that's stirring up quite a buzz in the retro handheld community. But before we jump in, I just want to make it clear that this video is based off of research and is not a hands-on experience. The facts presented is based off of the experience of a variety of hands-on reviewers on YouTube mixed with my research and opinion. Hopefully we still find some value from it as I do endeavor to properly research the topics I make videos on. If you do, please remember to like, subscribe and share the video as it really helps the channel out. With that said, let's tackle the elephant in the room, the light bleed issue. Some customers who ordered the RG Cube have reported noticeable light leakage around the edges of the screen. It's like your game decided to wear a halo, but not in a good way. Retro Game Corps, a trusted voice in the handheld community, confirmed that two of the three review units they received suffered from this luminous quirk. According to the feedback, Anmini claimed it would be resolved when the unit was released for retail sales, but there have been reports of users that have received retail units with the same problem. Reportedly, Anmini did send users a replacement panel and screen to rectify the problem. This is at least a step in the right direction from their side, but it would leave a sour taste in my mouth. Personally, from the images I saw of the issue, it doesn't look like it would make the unit unplayable. I think I could learn to live with it if I did not have a choice, but the point users and reviewers are making is that we shouldn't have to. A user should not have to repair their own device. This should be dealt with by the manufacturer, or better yet, replace the device. Is it a deal breaker? That depends on your tolerance for this kind of issue, and willingness to take a chance on having to deal with it. Not everyone who ordered has had this problem, but at present I have seen at least two users on Discord who have had the same problem, and are waiting for a replacement front panel and screen. With that said, there has been quite a few reviewers who have had a very good experience with the Cube though. So to give you a clearer picture, let's take a look at the specs and an overview of the feedback. The RG Cube isn't just a pretty cubic face. It's packing a 3.9 inch 720 by 720 resolution screen, which is basically 4 inches of square goodness. It also has an 8 core Unisoc TA20 processor with a Mali G57 GPU clocked at 850 MHz. It has 8GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage, all sensor analog sticks and triggers, Android 13, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities, active cooling with a fan that's reportedly whisper quiet, and it has a USB-C port that allows for screen output to a larger display. Just a tip, if you want your output to scale to 16x9 on an external display, you will have to enable desktop mode in the settings. I will link a video from JustPlayJ in the description where he gives a full breakdown on how to do this. So, specs wise, this little unit rivals the RG556 with the exception of the screen. The 556 comes equipped with a larger 5.4 inch 1080p AMOLED display, giving it an edge, but it is also larger and more expensive. When it comes to design, the RG Cube comes in four color options, including a rather fetching gray and red that screams, I'm retro and proud. Its chunky, toy like appearance might not win any beauty pageants, but it's got personality and seems to be inspired by Power Kitty's RGB30 that is quite popular. The larger grips on the back also make it comfortable to hold, according to reports. The square aspect ratio is a plus for a lot of retro games, especially if you're into Game Boy or vertical arcade titles. It's like having a tiny CRT in your pocket, minus the weight and radiation. However, the analog sticks have been getting some side eye from reviewers. They've got limited range and a tendency to snap to cardinal directions according to the feedback I've seen, which is not ideal if you're planning a Mario 64 marathon for example. This seems to be a software based problem though, so it may be fixed with an update. Performance wise, the RG Cube is no slouch. It handles most retro systems with ease, often allowing for increased resolution. GameCube games generally play nice at 2x resolution for most titles. PS2 games might need to dial it back to 1.5 or lower for smooth sailing on more demanding titles. You will find games that struggle, but it seems that these are in the minority. The square screen works wonders for older games, but widescreen content will be letterboxed with black bars at the top and bottom. This did not seem to bother many of the reviewers who had hands on experience with the unit. On the plus side, Nintendo DS games scale well and look awesome on this boxy screen. Battery life is also a bright spot, offering 8 to 10 hours for retro gaming up to SNES, but probably about 2 to 3 hours for more demanding systems like PS2 and GameCube. So, should you order the Anbenic RG Cube despite the issues some are facing with it? Well, it's complicated. If you're a diehard retro enthusiast who dreams in 4x3 and doesn't mind a few quirks, the RG Cube could be your new best friend. Its unique form factor and capable performance make it a standout in the handheld emulation market. 
However, if you're sensitive to screen imperfection or need precise analog control, you might want to pause before hitting that auto button. The light bleed issue and limited analog stick functionality are concerns that could dampen your gaming joy. My advice? Wait for the dust to settle. Let Anmanic address the light bleed issue and see if they can work some magic on those analog sticks in firmware updates. If you're still feeling reservations after that, consider waiting until it's available on Amazon for easier returns, just in case. It looks like it can truly be an awesome retro device if it doesn't have the screen issue and if the imprecise analog sticks don't bother you or if you're willing to wait on a bit of a software fix for this. In the meantime, if you want to take a look at its wider brother, the RG556, you can do so by clicking on the link on screen now for my overview on it. That's it for this video though. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, and I will catch you in the next tech update.